Hi everyone, this is Lucy and today is Thursday. Today is Thursday, March 10th. And as you know, this is the weekly interview and I have an awesome guest today, uh, this week. And so, but before I introduce you to my guest, let's take care of a few housekeeping tips. If you are joining us live and I see somebody joining us live right now, um, please, you know, in the comments below, hashtag live. If you're watching the replay, hashtag replay, and do tell us where you're coming from because I always love to know where everybody's coming from. As you know, I'm coming in, you know, from Mexico where I live right now, and my guest today is from the USA, and we'll, we'll find out exactly where. The other thing that I would like to caution you is StreamYard permission above. You will see there's a StreamYard permission. Click on that and give StreamYard the permission to use your name. Otherwise, you're going to be coming across as Facebook user. Okay, so um, usually what I tell you, uh, what I like to inform my audience is how um, I met my, my uh, guests and also what we have in common. We're both entrepreneurs. Um, we're, uh, we're here to serve, uh, you know, our ideal clients. Uh, we actually met online and actually we had a, a, a mutual friend uh, by the name of Mike and we can talk about that in a minute. And um, so um, the first time that I that I met my my uh, guest was she was a guest at our um, one of our one of our uh, trainings. So, um, so I will talk about that too. We kind of have the same mentors uh, or some of the mentors that we have are mutual, Dean Graciosi, Tony Robbins, and um, we're both um, progress next sirs, as I call them. So without any further ado, I want you to meet Danielle Maurer. Danielle, hi, how are you? I'm doing really well, Lucy. How are you? So wonderful to see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Where are you coming in from? Ooh, I'm in Atlanta, Georgia. So I'm on the East Coast. Ooh, ooh. Is that where you're from or did you, are you just living there? For No, I'm living here. I grew up in Miami. So I, although still on the East Coast, uh -huh. a little bit more North, different kind of weather and temperature. Wishing I was right. in Mexico right about now. It's cold here. <laughs> I know. That's why I moved to Mexico. I'm, I came from cold country and I swore that I'd never have another winter of my life. So that's how I ended up in Mexico. So, um, Danielle, would you tell us a little bit about your background? Because I know that um, you, you were very into the corporate world mm -hmm. and now you are a, an emotional mastery high performance co coach. You know, what's in between there? Can you fill us in with that information a little bit? Sure, sure. Um, I do come from a very strong corporate background mm -hmm. for well over 14 years, but my, my last career was 14 years in the fitness industry, but I was not the group fitness coach. I was the executive director up in the corporate office creating programs for well over 60, 70,000 people in racket sports. And I took a division that when I first started was more like 60,000 a year and made it a $50 million program. So my job was really serving people who were in the programs, which would be the members in this company that had at the time 156 locations with four of them being in Canada. So it wasn't all US, mm -hmm. um, but also having 450 employees and being their everybody's coach everybody's coach. And that's really what leadership is about, right? Mm -hmm. It's about taking people from here and bringing them here and knowing what that is. And so when one of my years, about four years ago, I had a serious stroke and I was in a coma for about 26 hours. And when I came out, I couldn't see, I couldn't really speak very well. I couldn't remember things. I was crawling on the floor and it took me about three and a half years to start to get through. And even today, occasionally I have a problem with uh, 
I'll pronounce a word wrong. I'll look off to the left to remember the word, or occasionally I still have the double vision. But the doctors had said I would never get better. And I stayed working the entire time. The entire time I stayed in my corporate job, I flew all over the United States and Canada, and I stayed very, very high pressure. And I was focused on dealing with the physical ailments because that's what we well, see. I wasn't realizing that there were internal ones, but I always knew I was called to do more. So how do, how do you become who I am today mm -hmm. is when the world shut down, it was my moment. But I didn't realize that inside, I was still broken. Mm -hmm. And I turned to Tony Robbins, and who introduced me to Dean Graziosi, who in one of his programs uh, asked the tough question and actually called me up. And that's where I had my breakthrough. And I fixed the inside. And I went on this quest, knowing that I would always be a coach, mm -hmm. knowing that I would always lead others, like I always have, right. to understanding emotional intelligence, emotional mastery, and what it did for me, so I could fix the inside. And how that allowed me to move further faster. And it allowed me to be stop trying to become and be in this mm -hmm. new sandbox I knew nothing about. And I recognized that everybody else around me who was trying to build a business in an online space, we're missing the emotional mastery to right. get them there. And oh my goodness, it helped me fix what I thought was damaged goods, even at my level, to really be able to fine tune and show people at, at different points how you could use this and, and be who you desired to become, you know, to, to finally be and stop becoming. Right, 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 right. <laughs> well said. Finally, be and start becoming. Absolutely. Is it possible to ask you what that question was that Dean posed on that day that you, you were featured, I guess? <laughs> yes. So, you know, we'll always hear the masters, our coaches say, mm -hmm. you know, what's your old story? What's your new story? And you can map that out. And that is 100% true. And then you create the bridge to get there. That's the exercise. But for the first time ever, he told, or at least for me, he told the story of the two wolves, an old Cherokee story. Oh, mm -hmm. And he asked, which wolf will you feed? And that one made me sit back. Mm -hmm. But then he also said, if it was a parasite, what would you do with it? And as much as I wanted to get rid of the physical issues that I have mm -hmm. and prove the doctors wrong, that I wouldn't stay there. If I had a parasite, I'd go to the doctor. Right. I'd do everything I can. I'd drink the juices to get rid of the parasite. So why am I not fixing the inside? Mm -hmm. And I understand that for so many of us, we're so afraid to really look in the mirror right. and really know what's deep inside because it can be painful, but I've never been a surface scratcher. I've always been this deep sea fisher. So I dug deep that day and it broke me down and I cried and I had to admit for the first time, I thought I was damaged goods. And I said it to him right out loud. And I remember him sitting back and like shaking his head. And it was that moment when I was done with that day with him that I sat down and decided the parasite had to go. I was going to feed the right wolf. I believed in the story so much because it was the first time that I heard that, mm -hmm. that it resonated so much that I teach my own students that, but I created an actual exercise out of it. I took it 10 steps further because it was that powerful. And what I say to people who are on a quest for something, there were moments that we hear something and we're hearing the same thing from different people. Right. But it's the way somebody says something mm -hmm. that resonates with you and unlocks the one key you were searching for. Doesn't Absolutely. mean you don't get it. Right? Absolutely. You know, and, 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 you know, you and I are kind of in the same business. We're helping mm -hmm. people launch their business. But, you know, we're different. And we have different messages and, you know, we do it differently. And so some, you know, some people will resonate with me, some will re resonate with you. And so 
that's the way it goes, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, so tell me what, I mean, obviously there was great transformation, but, you know, to have a stroke at your age, I mean, you were really very young. I mean, I look younger than what I really am. (laughs) I was 49. Wow. 49. But that's pretty young for a woman to have a stroke. And, you know, I mean, you, you were lucky to, I mean, you were in a coma for God's sakes. You were really lucky to, do you have survived? You must have had a, I mean, do, can, do, do you remember being in a coma? I mean, I'm, I've always wondered about th- that. No. Do you remember hearing well, voices? Here's, here's what I would say. Because there is always disbelief when you wake up and somebody tells you you had a stroke. Like, that's mm-hmm. not the word you want to hear in the hospital, right? right? right. Um, it was a simple, and I think everybody can, re- can resonate with this. If you've ever stood up and the room just kind of did this to you for a second and right. you think, I stood up too quick. That's what it was. Okay. So I laid down because I thought maybe I'm a little dizzy. I just need to rest because I just got off a huge flight and I fell asleep and it was at night, but I really wasn't asleep. I was out. I remember nothing from that moment. I remember standing up and feeling that mm-hmm. and then lights were out. You know nothing until you wake up and the next thing you know, you've come to and someone's having a conversation with you. But even at that, where you are in a stroke, it's like having a concussion. So if you've ever had anybody had a concussion, you know, your brain is swollen to to your skull. So it's not. And in this mode, you have dead brain cells. So your brain isn't able to connect the same way. It's got to actually create new connections. And so you don't process things the same. You don't hear things the same. You, you can go into denial, which, hi, how you doing? I did. Mm-hmm. So the answer is, no, I don't remember being in a concussion. I couldn't tell you what it was. I could just tell you that there's a big gap of time to this day, unless you told me what happened. I don't even know how I got to the hospital. Okay, okay, but at that point, did you then decide, okay, this is enough? No, I, you know, I've got to get out of this corporate world. This is not for me. I mean, uh, I know that you, you felt you heard the calling, so you knew you were, you were, you were made for something greater. And 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 did, was that the impetus that that got you going? And and you it took me two for- years to answer the phone <laughs> on that call. It took me two years, wow. and the. For, for everybody, it'll be different why we don't answer the phone call. For me, it was because I had an entire team that I had brought from all around the world to come work for me who needed me, right. were terrified that I had a stroke and I stayed in the game. And I had clients all over the world that needed me. And there's a moment where you go to build this new identity. I was already building a new identity because of the stroke. Right. Now to step into the next sandbox, what I'm called for, to answer that phone call meant another identity on top of the identity. And that can become very scary. So there was true fear that I didn't recognize with fear because what I masked was, they need me. Yeah. I can't walk away. What will they yeah. do without me? And I should have when the phone first rang. But I waited two years. But for me, it just kept crossing my path, the phone kept ringing. Someone wasn't going to stop calling. Right. And when we all went into lockdown, that's when I knew this is it. This is the moment. Pick up the phone and start to serve. So that was a blessing in disguise. Really, COVID for you was a blessing in disguise. Yeah, yeah. Yes, absolutely. And it started me on my journey. And I will say, because I I'm somebody who creates and executes. I didn't waste time at that moment. I bet not. I recognized I wasted two years of not answering the phone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I took the courses. I got the mentors for me to understand where I was going and exactly what I wanted to be. But I did the action along the way. And so, Lucy, as you help female entrepreneurs as well, you know that many of us try to learn. We don't execute. We don't take action. I know. And that's the key. And, and we need people to pull us and to push us and to hold us when we need to be held, but they have to take the action. And that's the difference between becoming and be mm-hmm. dreamer 
doer right on the field playing or sitting in the stands i know it's so it's so true because you know i mean we uh, my team and i have a motto you know stop learning start launching <laughs> you know because i mean you can go on learning for the rest of your life but anyway i also want to talk to you about i know that you've been a moderator for the um you know for, for dean's uh Self, uh, self education revolution. It started as a movement and now it's really a re revolution for sure. And you've been moderating for him for quite a while. Mm -hmm. Now, is this something that you just love to do because, because you, I, I know you also have your own agency and you have a partner too, right? Mm -hmm. So, so why do you, you know, why do you keep on moderating for? for um, Dean's program? So I stepped up in a big way for Dean Graziosi and his community. I don't mm -hmm. just do Sir, I do all the events that he runs. Okay. I do his inner circle. Um, so as my, whenever he says, hey, we need help, I'm, I answer the call, I'm in the groups, I post the videos, I try to lead by example. So people understand you don't have to be afraid of who you want to be. The why is a twofold why. It started because for me, Dean gave me the keys to save my own life, mm -hmm. which was to fix the inside right. from the stroke. And for that gift and his knowledge on moving into this world, I will forever be grateful and loyal. So I serve him. Back. I pay it back. But along my journey, I meet beautiful people like you and so many others that they're either ahead of me, they're right where I am, or maybe they're just starting out or maybe they're struggling. And if I can just help one person in that group become, <clears throat> step forward, right. stop being, playing small, stop dimming their light, believing in their self because they saw me do it then that's where I show up and I serve because that's my heart. That's my heart. So now the second reason is because I don't want to see anybody not live their dream, be afraid of their dream, hesitate, wonder if it's for me. I'm like you, I own the get launched agency. Mm -hmm. That's me taking female entrepreneurs and getting them from wanting to do something to actually doing it. Which is the, uh, uh, to do. that, that's yeah. the biggest step ever. I mean, I mean, you and I both know how, how big a step that is. Mm -hmm. And, and, you know, some of them need hand holding to take that step. And so, Absolutely. oh my God. So um, you have a partner. Um, did you, is it some, somebody that you met, be, you know, why did you take a partner? I, I, I know that having a team always works better than, than being a solopreneur mm -hmm. is, you know, was there a specific reason why you are with this partner? I, I, at first, I thought maybe it was your husband because you have a great relationship with your husband. But but it, th this is a, a business partner, right? Yes. So I did not meet Helen in um, Dean's group. She's mm -hmm. actually not been in Dean's group. Where I met Helen was with Pedro Adeo. And walking through learning the power of virtual events or challenges, or as Dean calls them, lightning launches. Um, we were live in Pedro's house and she was there with, for the whole weekend. And there was something about her that resonated. And she just walked up and said, hi, I'm Helen. Would you like to go to lunch? That's wonderful. And I did. And she's, you know, she comes from a little bit of a different background, but also a corporate background. And she is so talented in things that I'm not necessarily gifted in the same way she is. And she asked me, she says, how would you like to partner? And I, I believe in life that you come across people for the right, for, for the reasons like divine intervention. Absolutely. I do. That, that spidey sense that you're not quite sure how it fits, but you know, they're in your life for a reason. Mm -hmm. And so, or a season. <laughs> and I don't think it's a season. I think it's a reason I, you know, I don't being a solopreneur. It's so hard. It's difficult, mm -hmm. but being a partnerpreneur, 
a collabpreneur, mm -hmm. that's amazing because now, now you can, you know, work out ideas and go faster and hold each other accountable. And so when she asked me the question, it was a no brainer for me. And we've been together ever since. And it doesn't mean that if you decide to go from solopreneur, which I recommend to everybody to be a partnerpreneur, a collabpreneur, yeah. uh, a friendpreneur, whatever, accountabilitypreneur, yeah. that you won't always agree on the same things. But that's the beauty of it. Yeah. That's the beauty of it. But and you learn so much more with a partner, so much quicker also. A million percent. And you will also learn from your client. You will also learn from your niche, your who, your ideal client, your right for client, your dot, however you'd like to call that. You learn from them too. Wonderful. Um, you know, I'd like to talk a little bit about your husband because I know that you, uh, you, have, you seem to have a wonderful uh, relationship with your husband. You've traveled. You both like to travel. You've traveled the whole world. Um, can, can you talk a little bit about, about that situation? Cause it's, I mean, it's, it, to me, it's just, you know, it, it's just wonderful to have a, a partner that, that you get along with so well. So we met almost 27 years ago. Okay. That's how long we've been together. Wow. And we've been married for about 23 years now. Um, we met in Jamaica. Everybody asks us, where did we meet? He's a professional squash player. So he's an athlete. He's a world ranked athlete. Okay. I knew nothing about squash in the time. And lo and behold, I learned that business. And that's how I ended up in the fitness industry. I've always been a business partner with him in that world or his actual boss in the company okay. and believe it or not. And so he still trains and competes. We have a daughter who's 22 in college right now. Um, but there's just something magical that we work, but we look at a relationship. So, so different, meaning there was a time when I was, and I, I met him, I must've been 23 years old. So imagine I've been with him more than half of my life. Mm -hmm. I think there's a time in everybody's life when we are not at the mature level where we date and we're with somebody. And especially for women, we're looking for the husband, right? Because that's what we're told to do. Disney tells us to find the prince. That's right. Right? And everything's <laughs> going to be okay. Exactly. But we find the prince, we've kissed our frogs, and we get, we, we get our prince, and then we somehow want to change them. We want to train them. Yeah. But for him, and I did that. I was guilty. But when I met him, he was such a bright light, such a new soul in the world. And it wasn't about training, changing. It was really about loving him for who he is and loving him for who he's not. And not trying to make him be who he's not. That takes just a lot of awareness. Be. Yeah, mm -hmm. just be. And right. he does the same for me. Do I always agree with the decision that he makes? Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. But I can tell you in 27 years, there's no blowouts. There's no fights. There's no, we respectfully disagree or agree to disagree on a certain topic, but we respect the two perspectives. And we always find a way in the middle to handle the situation, especially like if it comes from our daughter, right? Don't most right. couples argue over, you know, I don't want her to do that. You know, I want her to do that. No, I don't agree with this. And I agree with that. And so some of it comes from the way that we were brought up. I can tell you that I come from a family that has divorced. My parents are divorced, mm -hmm. but my grandparents, both sides never got divorced. And that's they the relationship. Did back then. <laughs> yeah. But the love that they had, mm -hmm. the respect that they had, and it's a very tight knit family that even when my parents went through the divorce, they stopped talking for a bit, but then mm -hmm. I brought them back together because it didn't matter if it was like your 20th cousin, it was almost like your brother and your sister. That's how we're brought up. But yet mm -hmm. he came from a family that stayed together and fought all the time. And then they got divorced. And so he never knew what a real relationship was. He learned it through mine. So, wow, what a different, it wasn't even that we were two different people. He's Irish straight from Dublin. I'm American straight from the States. Oh, wow. It's two different cultures. So we were brought up different. We were brought up in two different worlds. We were brought up with two completely different values and morals. Mm -hmm. And what a journey. And yes, we travel the world together because we are the best friends. We have each other's back. 
We walk side by side. We know life's going to knock you down. We've had health scares. We both almost died. We both saved each other's lives and nursed each other back to health. And that's everything that you want. But do we agree on everything? No. And that's okay. Yeah, that's, that's okay because he's not my enemy. He's my partner. He's my soulmate. He, he's, he needs to be who he is and I need to be who I am. And how do we support each other on that journey? Absolutely. And when you figure that out, that's the key. Yeah, to I need to be me, life. you know, if I'm yeah. good. Absolutely. So he's, um, I take it he's very, very supportive of, mm -hmm. of you being out of the corporate world into something that you truly love, you're passionate about. So, yes. And I will say, after 14 years of being his boss up in the corporate <laughs> office while he's, he's in a club working, mm -hmm. even a week ago, you need to come back. Everybody needs you. Um, it's not that he doesn't believe in what I'm doing and he doesn't see the lives that I change. And he's and very respectful and he can't, like that's not him. He can't do that. He's a squash player. But he still misses me in that world. Right. So he's always going to want me to be there. And when I say no, he's like, oh, really? Right? So yeah. there, there's missing. But is he supportive where I am now? 100%. But you know what? I earned that. I earn that because when I say I'm going to take, I call it like a Harvard education. I take over a hundred thousand dollars invest it in my education. And I'm not saying that's the right move for everybody. And I do it in about a year on a stroke brain. He knows that when I say to him, I'm going to take this money and I'm going to do this because I'm going to do this, that I'm actually going to deliver that back. Okay. He knows you can too. He yeah. knows I can and he knows I will and I'll fight for it every day. And I may not get it right every single time. Right. And it may not be perfect right out of the gate, but he knows I'm going to fight for that. Right. That's, uh, that's a beautiful story. So, so tell me, uh, your ideal client, who, who, I know that you work mostly with women. And so who is that ideal woman that you would actually, you know, that you end up working with? Who, who is she? Is that so you? She, she is a female entrepreneur who's changed her identity to move into this online world. And she is that knowledge broker uh, creating a course or maybe doing a service because she's a coach. She's there to serve others and make great impact. Mm -hmm. But she is struggling. She's done those courses. She's, she's trying to figure it out and she can't put it together. And she needs that coach to help mm -hmm. her actually become. So she doesn't quite know what she needs, but because of it, she's just grabbing at everything. And she comes to me and, and she comes to me at different points in her journey. They understand the who, they understand what they saw, they understand kind of where they want to go, but it's just not coming together. So I help them put all of that together, build the confidence, Build the courage so that they can move forward and they actually launch and they're actually where they need to go so that they streamline and they practice it and they get the reps in so that when they're sitting in front of the people that they want to serve, they're ready. It's not perfect. It may not be perfect. There's no such thing, but they are ready. And then the second stage that they go through is now that they've done this, now they got to scale. Yeah. And where do they go from there? Definitely. And there we are. I always say to anyone who listens, especially even in your world, being an entrepreneur takes thick skin. Oh, it does. Because mm -hmm. we get knocked down. We get bloodied. We get bruised. We cry. We, we cry a lot. We celebrate. Mm -hmm. But what it needs more than thick skin is a mentor and a coach in a corner. Right. Someone like you, Lucy. Yeah. Someone like me. Yeah. So that they don't think they're crazy. And they don't give up and they don't think it's not meant for them because sometimes Dean will say this, and this is true. We run the race and we sit down just before the finish line. Cause we can't see the finish line is two steps in front of us. Mm -hmm. And you need that person to, to just say, Hey, one more step, one more. Yeah. One more step. You know, Speaking of coaches, um, you did mention Pedro. Mm -hmm. um, and so is uh, his last name is Ateo. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So are you, is he still your coach? Because I do believe that coaches, I would never have, 
I would never have a coach who, who didn't believe that she or he needed a coach too. So is he still your coach? He's still my coach. And why Pedro? And my coaches. Why Pedro? Yeah. So in the world of picking a mentor and coaches, mm -hmm. I will, I, I'll tell you my why him and why a Dean um, and why a Brendan Burchard for that reason, we all have to understand what does it serve for us? Mm -hmm. What capability does it give you? And each, those three, that triad give me different things. Mm -hmm. Pedro Deo is what people recognize him to be the challenge king, right? He has the event format. And I, I studied with Blue and Berry for Sage as well. But he has the format as how do you convert? How do you get your message out there? But the reality is you don't realize Pedro actually teaches business skills. He's five days a week. He's no joke. I went to him to be a consultant, a challenge consultant. That's 900 hours of study so far, a 44 pace, a 44 page dissertation and five case studies oh just God. to get my bachelor's. Right. But what we learn with Pedro is live techniques. And he pulls back the curtain because he's very honest because he shows you his struggles and mm -hmm. his level. That's not where we are or anybody that follows you or I, Lucy. Right. Mm -hmm. Those are different struggles. The Dean is the, you can, and the mindset and how do you do the course and how do you believe in yourself and, and some of the same messaging and the Brendan for me, well, that's my certification as a high performance coach. Okay. Right. Three unique things, yeah, exactly. but all of them tie it together in order to be, and I will never let go of my mentors and our, my, our mentors have mentors. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. It's just, I mean, you know, I have a coach for business. I have a coach for tennis. I have a, you know, I mean, I mean, coaches are really, and you know, coaching, you know, I can remember uh, 10 years ago when I, when I started with Mary Morrissey and she has one of the, the great coaching uh, programs, but I didn't want to be a coach. I just wanted to do it for personal development, you know, and, uh, and I consider myself more of a mentor than a coach. And, you know, that could just be a play of words. But, you know, you end up being, you know, I, I, I was a teacher all my life for 35 years. So you end up being a coach there, too. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like just. But, but then as you go along being a coach, you're a student at the same time. I mean, you learn from your clients, you know, Absolutely. what I, you know, you could probably tell us what are some of the things that you have learned from your clients? Oh. I've learned the fears. I've learned what gets them stuck. Mm -hmm. um, I've learned where they excel. I learn where they unlock the one thing because they don't recognize they already have it all within them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's the one thing that needs to unlock that propels them forward. I see what makes them cry. I see that. And it's unique for each, but there's always one golden thread. And what's that? The golden thread is the one thing we're not willing to admit. Many of us don't believe in ourselves. We're afraid. And that's why we're searching for all the different courses and all the different tools. And if I just knew this and if I could just learn that. And wait a minute. I just have to understand how to do. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I just need this. And it's the security blanket. It's like Linus walking around with a security blanket. And when you can get somebody to recognize that the message that they have, that the voice, that the calling, they need to believe in it. It's there for a reason and it's unique for them and they do have the gift and somebody will listen to them and they do resonate. Oh, to see that moment is a pure gift back to me. But we all have it. Tony Robbins has it. Pedro Deo has that fear. Dean has that fear. And every time you step up to the next level, it comes back it comes in a back. different yeah. way. Yeah. It, it's okay. You're not alone. You are not alone. None of us are alone in every step of our journey. And I've won major awards. I've been called the most influential in the United States in, in what I did. But there was still always something. Yeah. That was that fear. That was that one. Oh, I can't do that. I'm not qualified to do that. I, but you can, 
And, but until you start doing it, you don't know. Absolutely. Don't know. Well, how do you teach emotional mastery to, to your clients? I mean, it, that's a big, it's very big. It's very big. And it is a framework and it is a process. So when I really want to make impact in emotional mastery, I take you one-on-one. -on -one. And I know many people say, don't go one-on-one, -on -one, go one to many. Mm -hmm. And I can teach a theory of emotional mastery, but I don't know what you do with it and how it resonates. So I can teach, I will do a theory in a group, one to many, but I take my clients one-on-one -on -one because I need to hear you. I need to see you. It will come out as, as you are speaking. It is not about me just telling you. It is about me listening to you to see where you're caught up. Right. And the reality is the things that we believe in ourselves, we put the meaning to the words. We've accepted somebody else's label that doesn't exist. We have. And we have no proof that that's true. In fact, we have proof that it's exactly the opposite. And when you understand that, you stop accepting the labels. You stop putting yourself down and you actually move further and farther. And so I will say this, this is a true story. And this is a bizarre one that, that mm -hmm. I have a hard time believing myself. So when I had the stroke, there was no medical reason for it. Other than good old overwork and stress. Yeah, yeah. overwork <laughs> and stress, yes. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. Wow. Constantly worrying, constantly stressing out. Did I do the right thing? Did, does my boss think I, I, oh my gosh, I'm not going to be able to do that project. Oh, you want an extra 5 million? Where am I going to, like, we can find all the things. And as women, especially, we pack them inside and, and right. we let it eat at us, right? So I was highly stressed. I had the stroke. When I came out from the stroke for three years, I've been fighting these ailments. My stress markers in blood exams, because I, I do this every single month, mm -hmm. weren't extremely high, but they were good enough and high. Still at risk, right? But here's the thing. I learned emotional mastery in 2020. I put it into play 2020, 2021. I go to my same doctor, blood exam. Mm -hmm. You can see the markers. Zero. Wow. Zero in a time where I lost my grandmother to COVID. Mm -hmm. My daughter had COVID and she was having heart issues. We were afraid we would get COVID and we can't because we can't do the, we couldn't do the vaccine at the time. And because we have underlying issues, me stroke him, he had mm -hmm. an attack that would put us in the hospital. Um, I wasn't working my corporate job and making the six figures. And I was still trying to figure out where I was going and doing all this education right? That's a lot of stressors, yes. mm -hmm. but yet you do a blood exam and it, it's zero. And my doctor looked at me and said, what are you doing? I need to bottle it up and give it to other people. Right. And I said, emotional mastery, because I can choose to put all the fear and the worry and the ah, bah, 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 behind what's happening around me, or I can choose to sail the sea smooth and know I'm going to get through and chunk it off one piece at a time. And that sounds easier than done, right? Oh, I couldn't do that. That's what I hear all the time. But know that I've taught my clients that mm -hmm. and they've gotten jobs 30% higher. They're not stressed. They have a different level of confidence. They have a different level of courage. They walk in and their boss tells them a project is wrong and they don't run home crying and stressed out that they think they're going to get fired. They've smoothed through it to the point that their whole life has changed because you gave them the gift of intelligence, emotional intelligence. If you'd said that to me five years ago, I'd been like, what? Danielle, why wouldn't you want to work in the corporate world and help all those women in the corporate world? Oh, I, I guess you do you, you do so one by one. You get them out of there and, and you take that stress away. That's what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. But right, I will tell you that in the space we all are now, mm -hmm. the space you're in, Lucy, the space I'm in, the space that your guests are in mm -hmm. is 
highly stressful because it's changing so fast. Right. There is a security when you have a job and you have a salary and you have pay and it's coming mm -hmm. in. It's different when you're fighting for that every single day and you don't know how you're going to go find your ideal client or how you're going to beat an algorithm or how you're going to get your message through or how you're going to resonate. And that causes even more stress in the corporate job. Mm -hmm. I'm in the right space. Right. I'm in the right space. And, and of course, every day I help them. Sure. But right now I'm in the right space. You have, and you must have a great following also. I mean, you were, you were head of, of, you know, the fitness world for a long time. And, and also you also were a former manager for bed and uh, yeah, for bed, bath and beyond one of my favorite places. Is How did that happen? Did that happen after the fitness or that what? was before. So I started out, um, I don't even know how I did it, but when I was 13, I started working for Pier One Imports as a cashier. My mom was actually my boss because she was the GM of, of, of there. So that meant I actually had to be better than the regular employee, uh -huh. right? Could you exactly. imagine? Exactly. And so I moved from there to like a little mini department manager in Pier One. And I left and I actually went to Bed Bath & Beyond. And in, in their biggest, highest grossing store, and I became like a department manager, which was pretty tight and tough. But I got recruited out by linens and things who folded a few years ago. And I was a general manager. I was an area director. And I just worked my way up. And so from there, I had my daughter. I stopped. And the CEO of Lifetime Fitness came walking through my husband's club where we had built our own business and mm -hmm. said, Hey, I'm going to build a club here in Atlanta. And we got, he went to recruit my husband and somehow met me and then off we go. Right. So I get you with bed, bath and beyond. And I will say retail is not for the faint of heart. No, that's it's awful. I've been there. I know. Yeah. Retail loves to eat your hours in your life and you can never do enough and give enough. Exactly. Exactly. So, but it was the great chops I probably needed in my journey, right? Because life mm -hmm. happens, as Tony says, for you, not to yeah, you. Exactly. To really build that you're not going to fall down when you've worked your 80th hour. Right. <laughs> you're not going to fall down when you worked uh, right around the clock and overnight <laughs> to go do something. Uh, and it, you're just not. So it was the reps that I needed to build me up to here, to mm -hmm. be able to fight for others. Mm -hmm. But you're still a consultant. Are you not for these companies? Yeah. No, I don't no, you're not. for them right now. No, no, no. I'm solely focused on your business. So let's talk about your Facebook group because it's called Get Launched. Mm -hmm. Get Launched Agency. Yes. Yeah, it's an agency. So um, so you work with your partner, Helen, and, um, and, and I think you just finished a three-day challenge uh, recently. And um, so um, what was that all about, the three-day challenge? It was the Don't Get Launched Challenge. And it was for female entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. And it was teaching them the format of a challenge, but yet taking them into our academy or eight-week academy. And the eight-week academy is, if you understand value ladders, as people will say, or right. product pyramids mm -hmm. or product funnels, you've got your DIY, your, your, you know, you do, you do it yourself done with you or done for you. Mm -hmm. And so this is more of a done with you and really done with you because they're live labs. Okay. Where you come in and learn and you've got to speak it out and practice it and you get feedback and you, everybody else in the class actually thumbs up, thumbs down, somewhere in the middle and we critique you and we help you go further. You get the feedback and everything you need. So it's not just take a course and try to go on your own demise and, and make it work. And then you get the question or the, the one thing you get stumped on and that's where you stay. This is we're going to do it. And by the time you're done, you are launched and you are confident because you've practiced it. You've practiced the pitch. You've gotten your copywriting done and you've, and you've got your marketing reviewed and everybody says, speaks to me, doesn't speak to me. So the get launched group is everybody who maybe isn't in the Academy that is now learning and getting the taste and the free tips. Mm -hmm. 
And then the Get Launched Academy is everybody who steps in to really, they're ready to go do the work. Okay. So think of it as the prep and then those that are stepping forward into their life. The implementation of it all. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. So what, I, what haven't I touched upon that you would like to, my audience to know about you? You know, it's really not about me. Yeah, it's not about me. It's, I, I think collectively as women, mm -hmm. we serve from the heart. We do. And we will give everything that we have, mm -hmm. but yet we put ourselves last. Yeah. And we give more sometimes than we get. And that's, that's where we start to feel like we have no value. So for every woman that's, that's here or listens in a replay, you have a message. You matter. Mm -hmm. You are valued. And you need to believe in you. And you need to charge and not be afraid to put a price on what you offer because it's a gift and you're helping somebody who's maybe just one step behind you or five steps behind you. And you can't have fear. You can't sit here as the mad scientist in the lab creating the cure for cancer and no one ever knows about it. Right. You don't help anybody. So Get that you message need to step forward into your light and you need to become who you want to be because you deserve it right. and you're worth it and you're valuable and you're unique. Yes. And you're, yeah. And you're unique. And is someone going to listen to you? Yes. Because the way Lucy speaks is different from the way that I speak is Absolutely. different from the way that Dean Graciosi speaks and Tony speaks. Know that if you looked at Brendan Burchard, Tony Robbins and Dean Graziosi, they all teach somewhat the same thing. They all teach mindset. Right. But who you listen to is who resonates to you. And you're going to resonate to somebody. So don't be afraid and don't think you need to be perfect. Just step out and be. That's what people need to know. So when you're following Lucy, you see Lucy doing it right now in front of you by calling me in. Absolutely. You can do it too. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Right. So that would be the message you would have for somebody who wants to get online and, and doesn't know where to start or who to trust. And, mm -hmm. you know, find I'm, someone that you resonate with. Exactly. Find somebody you believe in that you trust in. Right. Stop looking for all the things. Stop being the professional course junkie, the professional note taker. Mm -hmm. It's okay to do those things. But if you're not taking action as you're learning, mm -hmm. Just a dreamer. Mm -hmm. You're a dreamer. You're not a doer. You're yeah. sitting in the stands and that may be okay for you, mm -hmm. but you need to find the person that you believe in. And then you need to move your own needle because I know Lucy, you don't like the word coach. I do because it's also a mentor. It's a partner. It's, mm -hmm. it, I love all my people so hard that, oh my gosh, if they cry, I'm crying with them. Like we're having a boohoo fest. <laughs> um, a boohoo fest. fest, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> tissues. I always keep, I swear, look, I always keep tissues on my yeah, desk because I, I never it. know yeah. who's going to put me in the boohoos that day. And maybe yeah. nobody does. And maybe we're just celebrating. But at the end of the day, you know, you, a coach, a mentor is the person who holds you accountable and helps you. And we, as that person, as the teacher, as the mentor, as the coach, we can only go so far. Absolutely. We can give you the knowledge. We can give you every tactic that you need. But if you don't take it and don't and we got to take you to the water, but we can't make you drink it. That's yeah. Sure. yeah, that's what we're here for. So who do you resonate with? Mm -hmm. Who do you need? Being a solopreneur, it's not fun. No, it isn't. And, it's and, and, and No, and it's... And really, I mean, it's the only way to burn your, yourself out, really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Why do it alone when you can when you can partner and you can stick to what you're good at, your gift, exactly. and exactly. let somebody else come in and let them shine in their gift. Exactly. As exactly. a coach or a mentor or as a course Be creator. a collaborator. Yeah, yeah, you do not need to know it all. There is exactly. nothing wrong with saying, I don't know that one. I'll get back to you. I say yeah. it all the time. That is so wonderful, Coach Danielle. That's wonderful. So, Danielle, if anybody wanted to contact you, I have in the tickler down below, it says, 
Uh, you can go to your Facebook group, which is uh, facebook.com um, slash groups, get launched agency. Or I have support at get, get launched agency also. Is there any other way that they can get a hold of you or is that the two That's ways? That's the best way. Best I try way. to keep everything streamlined down so that I can respond okay. very quickly right. and see where people want to go. Okay. So Lucy, you are the mentor. You are the coach. I'm very honored to have met you along my journey. And like I say, you know, sometimes we, everybody crosses paths right. for divine intervention. So I thank you for being you. No, I thank and you for being you here. Thank yeah. You. Thank you. Helping thank you. others. Thank you. And I know how busy you are and I really do appreciate it. and am honored that you spent this time here with us. So thank you. Thank and you all. very much. Okay. And to the audience, remember that next week, is, you know, next Thursday is another interview. And if you want to um, contact me, then message me. And um, especially if you have a story to tell, I would love to interview you. Bye for now. Bye, Danielle. And I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.